Greetings, friends. Uh, it's great to have an opportunity to be with you again. Uh, as you know, I've been away on vacation for a few weeks and uh, very grateful for God's care and provision while absent, uh, but also very grateful to be back again. Uh, we were here this last Sunday on the Lord's Day in the morning to be uh, in worship with everyone that was here and those of you that were present online. And uh, it was just great to be back and good to good to be back. So wanted to take some time to just share a few thoughts with you. One of the things that uh, was very mindful of, even while I was on vacation, is that while there's a bit of a break in things, uh, it doesn't mean that the spiritual battle goes away. There is a battle that we live in as long as we are in this world. But even though the battle rages, Jesus never changes. And one truth I've thought a fair amount about over these last few weeks is from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, this glorious statement that says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Indeed, the spiritual battle constantly rages, but Jesus never changes. He is our hope. He is our confidence. He is our life. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Master. He is our friend. And because of that, we can be faithful to what God has called us to and to continue to believe and to continue to persevere, to continue to strive to obey His commands in the circumstances that He ordains for us because He never changes. And this is apparent throughout the letter to Hebrews. A couple of implications that flow from this that you're very familiar with, but I want to just remind and encourage you of again. One of those implications is in chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, when the writer says, Since then we have a great high priest, and we can fill in, who never changes. We have a great high priest who never changes, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because Jesus never changes, we, we have a never-ending privilege and blessing of being at the throne of grace before God our Father, because Christ Jesus, our great high priest, is constantly there. And by faith, we can go to him in prayer and seek him in prayer. And so prayer, confident prayer, often and always before the throne of grace, is one of the implications of the fact that Jesus never changes, because he is always there for us. Another implication is fleshed out in chapter 10, uh, with another familiar passage, verses 19 to 25, and the writer says this, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, who never changes, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. He goes on to say, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. In every situation, in every circumstance, because Jesus never changes, we are to continually be seeking the Lord in prayer, being confident before the throne of grace, and we're to also maintain our confession, and we're to also continue to press in to our corporate life together as God's people, not forsaking meeting together, as is the habit of some. And I just want to encourage you, even in these days of of the restrictions that we are trying to navigate even in these days where there's lots of good and right debate even among believers about should the church be defying government orders? Should we be striving to comply and 
And those are good and valid and necessary questions. And of course, we know for ourselves right now, uh, we're able to meet outside and we're able to gather on Sunday mornings. And we're also able to gather uh, over Zoom and in other contexts. And I just want to encourage you to continue to be striving to be faithful to this command, uh, to be with us when we gather on Sunday mornings, whether in person or online, to be with us when we gather on Sunday evenings for equipping hour or for our community group. Uh, there's always a dramatic reduction in attendance in what goes on on Sunday evening from what happens on Sunday morning. And I want to encourage you, if you're in the habit of not being with us on Sunday evenings, uh, to re-engage with that. That is a God-given privilege and responsibility, and we want you to be a part of these things, especially in these days where uh, there is so much difficulty going on in our world. The battle is constantly raging. And so because Jesus never changes, we need to continue to press in to our prayer life and dependence upon God at the throne of grace. And we need to continue to press in to our corporate life together as God's people, to be meeting together, to be seizing and taking advantage of every opportunity uh, that we have to do so. And of course, pressing into our relationships with one another, our love for one another, our care and our prayers for one another, and practical ways of serving one another day by day. And I know so much of that has been going on. It's been such a constant encouragement and blessing to see. I just want to encourage you to continue to be pressing into what the Lord has in the hope of the truth that Jesus never changes. I want to encourage you also to uh, consider reading a book that a number of us have read. I know Pastor Tim has read it. I've read it. I'm in the midst of reading it right now, and many others are as well. It's this little gem right here, Gentle and Lowly, The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers. It is an excellent meditation on the heart of Jesus, reflecting and expressing and manifesting the heart of the Father and of the Holy Spirit as well, that he is gentle and lowly. Uh, it is rich, it is dense, it is very readable, very accessible, but it expresses and, and draws out truths that focus on the, the heart of God for people, and it's, uh, that is particularly manifest in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I would encourage you to take advantage of that and just devour that and be strengthened in your faith in who Jesus is, not only all that he has done, but who he is, his heart for you who belong to him. A couple of other things I would just remind you of uh, this evening. I'm recording this on Wednesday morning and this evening, of course, we're having a special send off uh, for Paul and Ellie Ursall for their children, Janie and Mila and Titus. And I'm not sure when you're watching this, it may have already happened, but if you're seeing this before it happens, we certainly encourage you to be with us. And whether you're with us or not on Wednesday night for that send-off, certainly be praying for the Ursals as they begin their new ministry back at Grace Bible Church in Fair Oaks, where they have so many of their roots. And we are deeply going to miss them, but we are so grateful for the time God's been privileged to have them among us for the, for the deep uh, fruit that God has been pleased to bear through their lives while among us. And so we're going to miss them, but we're excited. So keep them in your prayers. I want to let you know also that I'll be back in the pulpit this coming Lord's Day. Uh, so very grateful for the ministry of Tim and the ministry of Paul and even this last Sunday, the ministry of Todd Bolton uh, from God's Word. But I am going to uh, have the privilege of being back. And for a number of weeks, for a few weeks, we're going to spend some time in 1 Corinthians 13 asking what is essential in the church. And you can take an early look at 1 Corinthians 13. You're probably familiar with it already. Uh, great realities regarding the holy love of God among us. That's what's essential. So we're going to take some time to spend looking at that. Well, again, I'm excited to be back. Uh, so grateful for each and every one of you. Continue to pray for the Lord's richest grace and blessings to you in the hope, in the blessings, in the riches, and in the power of all of his love in Christ. We look forward to seeing you uh, perhaps tonight uh, at the send-off for the Ursals, but also perhaps this coming Lord's Day. The richest blessings to you, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.